All right, thanks so much for sticking around with us. I'm Anthony Hill. It's 1030 here on the East Coast, 730 for our viewers out west. And we're covering the big news from coast to coast and around the world. On the rundown, talk about a domino effect. First, it was Tunisia, then it was Egypt, now it's Libya. And the Libyan president, Muammar Gaddafi, says he's not stepping down anytime soon. In fact, now he's saying his people love him. Is this a sign of denial? He's claimed that excessive force hasn't been used on protesters when video evidence says the exact contrary. U.S. Secretary of the State Hillary Clinton says the Libyan people have made it clear Gaddafi must go. Plus, the Second Amendment says yes, but some say no. I'm talking about gun control. Should there be more restrictions on firearms? That's the question. And DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act that prohibits the federal government from recognizing gay marriage. But what federal official says he's not supporting it? That and more, the weekly rundown starts right now. But this is where we begin. Libyan President Muammar Gaddafi is clinging to power. This is week two of massive protests in Libya in which the people want him out. He's told his supporters to retaliate. He's also said that he will, and I quote, be a martyr. He has stated that he does not plan on stepping down anytime soon. UN security forces have turned against him, if you will, telling him to step down. There's an undeniable wave in the Arab world with a new political ideology that is largely anti-autocratic, if you will. Joining me now to talk about this is WTOP Tuesday Night Anchor, Asa Stackle, host of WNYO's Don't Mention It, Jeremy Mench, and WTOP's Andrew Metz. Thanks, guys, for joining me. What do you make of this whole situation? Uh, very unsettling stuff, I guess, in North Africa. And, and like you said, yeah, there seems effects. to be a wave, though. Like first, like I said, it was Tunisia, then it was Egypt, and now it's Libya. <laughs> what do you think it is? What do you think can be attributed to the new thought and in, in politics? I think that they're just trying to go democratic. They're tired of being under pretty much a dictatorship, and they just want to be free. And seeing that another country is doing it, they want to do it. It's just like domino effect back after when we were in Vietnam War, and et cetera, with communism. I was, and it's a monkey see monkey do sort of thing. It starts off over in Egypt and then everywhere else, Tunisia, <coughs> excuse me, and Libya realize that, hey, if Egypt, if Egypt can do it, why can't we? So like you said, domino Exa effect. Exactly. And I was talking to some of my friends. I, I was saying, in my opinion, I think it's because of the, the newfound education. You know, they get mm -hmm. to see different um, democracies and different types of nations around the world and can compare it and say, okay, these people have this amount of rights and we have this, something's not right here. But I think a lot of it can be a testament to the, the education. What do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, I'd say that fair, because, especially in Tunisia, because yeah. that's a lot over uh, jobs and um, jobless college students, I mean, in all these countries, are starting these protests. And uh, they want jobs, they want change, they want democracy. Exactly. It's hard to pinpoint what's going to happen next, but if you were to predict what's going to happen, what would you say? I mean, because I think everything that's happened so far is, you know, unpredictable. Well, and well, nobody would have believed you if you said it like a month <laughs> ago. Exactly. Well, it's really tough in Libya right now because Gaddafi's trying to get all his, his supporters back. And so if he gets all of his supporters back, I mean, they're going to be like, okay, Gaddafi, you know, we forgive you for everything that you've done. All right. And then there will, of course, be a group of people that are always like, well, you know what, you really screwed us over here. You know, and we're still mad at you. So. Yeah. But the same thing also happened to Mubarak um, in Egypt. Is that at first he tried getting his supporters back, and then two days before, I was it two days, I believe, before he actually did step down, he made a statement saying that he was never going to step down. Yeah. So the I think that there really is no way of actually knowing what'll happen next, whether it's whether he does step down, whether Especially he does continue to... because you have these, you know, autocrats, if you will, who've been in power for so long, and, you know, yep. to, to hear, you know, um, people, your people, if you will, to say, we want you to step down. It's almost like a joke to them, but, again, I think um, these events have proven that the power really does lay within the people. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys a lot. All right, Sudan's President Omar Hassan al-Bashir won't run for president again when his term is up in 2015. At least that's what his spokesperson said. Bashir has been in power for over 20 years with an iron fist and now says that he has no desire to continue to be president. Instead, he wants, to, uh, he wants the next generation to take over. 
that same spokesperson said that this decision not to run has nothing to do with the massive uprisings across the Arab world. A 6.3 magnitude earthquake struck Christchurch, New Zealand. And last week, an estimated cost of $15 billion was reported. And Jeremy, it seems like the death toll continues to rise. Well, Anthony, I mean, right now the earthquake is getting pretty crazy around here. Um, there was a 7.1 magnitude earthquake that hit New Zealand, and about 150 people had uh, currently died. Um, in the last earthquake, this has been a pretty bad earthquake since yeah, the September 4th uh, accident. Uh, that happened. On Tuesday, officials uh, stated that there were about 154 people who had died from the quake, and geologists are saying that earthquakes are expected to continue in southern New Zealand, and the death toll is also expected to rise in the near future. Back to you, Anthony. All right, thanks a lot, Jeremy. Up next on the rundown, the end of an era in American history. That report from Chris Luan. And the Second Amendment says yes, but some say no. I'm talking about gun control. Plus, what major U.S. company received a government contract worth $30 billion? Yeah, $30 billion. And what top government official said he won't support DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act? That's just ahead on The Rundown. Last Thursday marked the end of an era. Spatial Discovery lifted off for the very last time. And Chris, I heard that the Discovery has flown 150 million times in an entire lifetime. Well, that's true, Anthony. And it's the end of an era, as you said, for NASA's space shuttle program. Last Thursday's launch of Space Shuttle Discovery was its last. Since the shuttle's first launch on August 30th, 1984, it has now been on 39 missions. This 11-day mission is to bring supplies, including a pressurized multi-purpose module, to the International Space Station. This is also the last year for the entire space shuttle fleet, with Atlantis being the last approved shuttle mission in late June. After its March 7th landing, Discovery will be put on display at the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. You know, Chris, I know I always get goosebumps whenever I see the shuttle actually takes off, but definitely an end of an era. Thanks a lot, Chris Lewan, and for us in the WTOP newsroom. Jared Logner was accused of shooting 19 people in Tucson, Arizona, including Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. He killed six. With that said, the debate of gun control in this country is still very much so heated, to say the least. Some plead the Second Amendment, which allows citizens to own firearms. And others believe that if there were stricter gun rules, this event, along with several others, could have been prevented. What do you think? Joining me now is Andrew Metz, WTOP's Carly Olds, and WTOP contributor Jennifer. Hey, what's up? Hey. I said, <laughs> What do you guys think about gun control, though? Well, it's something. <laughs> some people are against it, some are for it. I mean, for both. Uh, don't forget, neutral. Valid reasons. Yep. Neutral. Some people neutral. are down the line. Yeah. Yeah, neutral. It's a complicated situation. It's bittersweet. You know, because I mean, people are for it and people are against it. People need safety. People are paranoid. I mean, look at convicts. Once they come out of jail, they get paranoid. Um, regardless, but sh should convicts have guns, though? But think about it. If they're convicts, regardless of what the state does, what the government does, whatever regulation, regulations there is or there are, people are going to get guns no matter what. Yeah. For that protection. There's no way around it. Exactly. And if what you just said about the shooting, with the tragic shooting of 19 people and uh, Gabriel Geffords, that was right in the dead center of a gun-free zone, a designated gun-free zone by the state. And it did absolutely nothing to mm -hmm. protect her. All it did was keep people who could have stopped the shooter from having a gun at, the t at that particular time to do it. Could it be argued, though, if there were stricter rules, though, that he wouldn't have been able to get the gun? I mean, I, I surely don't agree with the notion that because of lack of gun control, he was able to get it and that she was shot and nine people were killed. But, I mean, it does, it does kind of put some meaning behind yeah. what some people think about restrictions on gun control. Is it fair to say that if there were more restrictions on guns that we would see um, less killings by guns, especially in the inner city? Not at all. No, no not because, at all. Because when you take guns away, really you're only take like what you you're said earlier, really you're only taking it away from law-abiding citizens who are having the guns for self-defense usage because the people who are going to use the guns for something that's illegal 
they don't care about the law anyway. So yeah, they're just exactly. going to go ahead. They're just going to exactly. go ahead and buy a gun. They don't care about the law. So because they don't care about the I law, mean, there shouldn't be any restrictions. But th it's not about the law. But look, look at what's happening today. Columbine, Virginia Tech, all these issues. Like there was, there was people involved, you know, in the mm -hmm. in these shootings. People saw this. People lived this. So every person has a right to own a gun mm -hmm. because they feel because they the feel constitution. yeah by every the person should have has their right and the other thing is lost my track of thought it happens <laughs> sorry guys but um, I'll come back uh, uh, Carly um, I mean I was going to say like do you think that yeah those like criminals and those people that are mentally unstable that like the Arizona shooting they want to go and commit these crimes and even if they're not um, allowed to possess a gun. I mean, if they really want to do that, so they're going to find the way around the law. Like, but I, I think the question is, is that should they, just because they're going to find a way, or you assume that they're going to find a way, does that mean we should not place restrictions on guns? Yeah, I mean, we are given the right by the Second Amendment, by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. You have people who are for gun control who say that um, the Second Amendment is not really valid, for lack of better words, in today, because back then we had militias talking about this now is because of what's going on that's why people get conscious because these events are happening and mm -hmm. they're get and they're gr they're increasing every day mm -hmm. so I don't blame people for wanting to purchase guns because yeah. the crime rates are growing up how do we so that's the, I think that's the question of that's crime rates are going up do we kind of dose it by allowing people to have guns mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yes, actually, because if, if right. let's, say, let's say you're walking through the city and I'm a criminal. Now, if I know that this city has a law preventing you from uh, carrying a firearm, mm -hmm. and let's say I, I, I'm a criminal, I don't care about the law, so I have my own firearm, and so I, I we're gonna know... Have to, we're going to have to keep it right there. Thanks a lot, okay. though. I'm yeah, sorry. Sure. We're short on time. The last World War I veteran died this Sunday of natural causes. His name is Frank Buckles, and he was 110 years old. Buckles lied about his age to join the Army at the age of 16. He was among the nearly 5 million Americans who served in World War I. In recent years, Buckles had, Buckles had said, I knew there'd only be one survivor one day. I didn't think it would be me. Buckles drove an ambulance during the war, saving his fellow American soldiers. All right, guess what rapper was invited to Prince Charles and Camilla's wedding? I checked my mailbox, it wasn't me. I didn't get the invitation yet. I'm pretty sure it's on its way. But I'll give you three seconds to guess. I bet you won't get it. All right, time's up. Kanye West was invited. I mean, I didn't even get my invitation yet. We'll be right back, you're watching the Weekly Rundown. I didn't get my invitation yet. Did you get yours? No. <laughs> I haven't seen anything. I'm pretty sure. A big contract. The Air Force awarded the aircraft company Boeing a $30 billion contract to manufacture 179 next generation aerial refueling tankers. Boeing won the governmental bid over the European aircraft company Airbus. Now, these planes are capable of actually refueling other planes in mid flight. This allows smaller jets to carry out longer missions without having to go through the hassle of landing and refueling. You know how that goes. These aircraft also have the capability of transporting cargo for the military. The type of plane that will be deployed is a retrofitted Boeing 767 and was 20-year-old Khalid Ali M. Alwasari caught in a jihad attempt. Asa is out there and he reports. All right, Anthony, to get you up to date, the 20-year-old Saudi student suspected of terrorism plots was seen in a federal court on Friday. Khalid Al-Wasari was charged with one count of attempted use of a weapon of mass destruction, which carries a penalty of life in prison. The FBI, FBI have found two of the three chemicals needed to make a bomb in Al-Wasari's possession and anticipated the purchase of the third and final chemical. Al-Wasari had made plans to bomb several dams, the residence of former President George Bush, and a number of other targets. Al-Wasari will remain in custody until March 11th, a preliminary hearing on the evidence and a decision about bail will be made then.
Currently, 14 states, including the District of Columbia, allow either same-sex marriage, civil unions, or recognize some sort of spousal rights for same-sex couples. Now, the Aloha State can be added to that list. Starting January 1, 2012, the state of Hawaii will allow civil unions. Last Wednesday, at the bill signing ceremony, Governor Neil Abercrombie said, and I quote, this is a prime example of exercising civic courage. It's about doing what's right, no matter how difficult, no matter how much opposition, end quote. This bill will extend the same rights to gay couples that couples and marriages enjoy. And since we're on the topic of gay rights and this country, President Obama has announced that his administration will not support DOMA, which stands for the Defense of Marriage Act, which prohibits the federal government from recognizing same-sex marriages. President Obama says it's not constitutional. What do you think? Is it constitutional? Is it not? Joining me now is WTOP's Andrew Metz, Jennifer Arcieta. Am I pronouncing that right, Jennifer? Arcieta. Arcieta. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. And Chris Lewan. What do you guys think about it, though? DOMA. I mean, it's, it's a ban, like I said, um, on the federal government actually recognizing gay marriage. It stands for the Defense of Marriage Act. Does marriage even need to be defended? That's, a, I think, a good question to start on. I am... Definitely defend. I just am 100% against uh, DOMA, especially mm -hmm. when it says defense of marriage, because it pretty much makes it seem like gay marriage is like an attack on an institution. That would be the but implications. It, that's, to I, some, that's exactly what that. it sounds like to me, and I, I am 100% against making it seem like gay marriage is a bad thing because I'm 100% for it. But you said you said right there that uh, that it's an attack on it. Well, marriage is an institution. And I don't. But I, let's keep it fair, though, because I am the journalist in this, and I have to okay. keep it kind of fair and balanced. No pun intended. Fox News. No. Uh, Fox. Um, we, <laughs> Fox News. Yeah. Um, marriage is um, a union under religious, uh, under uh, under the church, though, yes. right? And what we're talking about, we're talking about more along governmental lines, the license that the state issues. Mm -hmm. So I think the question is, is that how is it an attack against marriage? The churches don't have to marry gays. I, we, didn't really I think bring we can all agree the that. Though. When but I first but said you said that, that no. institution of marriage. You yes, said the institution did. of marriage. Yeah, that's under the church, what you're talking about. At least the standards that you're going by. Uh huh. Is, a is between a man and a woman, right? Yes. I I'm am. just trying to keep it, you know, just get the facts out there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's under the church, though. But what about the government, though? The, that's, the government is what the gives out the actual a whole license. Different thing than the than the but church. But that's what now. we're talking about, though. Exactly. So what, what is the defense against marriage? What is that? Why do they need a defense against marriage? Who's attacking marriage? I mean, marriage well, has I, a, a lot of other... I mean... <laughs> you're saying here who, who's attacking marriage. Well, it, at the topic of this argument right now is uh, gay marriage, so... All right, what do you think, Jennifer? What I think, gay marriage, you, there's nothing... You, we can't hide it. We have to do something about it. There's... Uh, they have rights also mm -hmm. uh, for marriage. All right, of thank you guys. Kind of, we gotta have to leave it right there. It's an interesting conversation. I wish we can keep going, oh, but uh, we're out of time. Up next on the rundown, Congress, the budget battle. You've heard of that, right? Can our government be shut down? And shut down as early as this week. And a billboard that's raised some eyebrows and offended others. You're watching the weekly rundown only on WTOP. All right, welcome back. This is the question. Can the government be shut down this week? Well, Congress is experiencing a budget battle. The Democrats and Republicans are at it again, like always, right? But can they meet at common grounds? Joining me now is Asa Stackle. What's going on? I think a lot of people are confused about this whole story, the budget battle. I think people don't really understand. Yeah, it is quite confusing. I don't know if you heard, but late Tuesday afternoon, which is right now we're shooting this, uh, Congress passed a two-week extension and a four billion dollar spending cut so government won't shut down within the new two, next two weeks okay but after two weeks passes they need to make the decision on a new budget or another extension so the debate is on again again just being put off we're gonna put it off for again, another two weeks since September 31st when the first budget was due all right thanks so. so much Asa thanks a lot Talk about a talented 10 year old he is talented I saw myself our next reporter Report rather is from CNN in Atlanta, Georgia. Good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I am gonna do that. I know. Last time was worse. <laughs> worse with Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like seven seconds. 
yards left. M Mr. Bear is screaming at me to shoot the ball. And I throw it like a baseball and it somehow goes in. Now let's watch the highlight. End of the first half, time running down. He lets it fly. From the ball left your hat, what were you thinking? Go in. And he banks it from half court. He's a pretty heady player, so you know how much time was left, and he threw it up and went in. Oh, I'm cheering like crazy. I, I couldn't believe what I just saw. I was very happy. <laughs> I was stunned. <laughs> stunned. As for Mark, he had one thought. How did that go in? In a perfect world, Mark's team would have won this game. They didn't, but nobody will ever remember that. It's the half-court shot they'll never forget. <laughs> All right, an anti-abortion billboard was spotted in lower Manhattan, and a lot of people were offended by not only the message, but what was said. The billboard was by the people, or rather the, the company Pro-Life, um, and it's a picture of a little African-American girl, and it says, and I quote, the most dangerous place for an African-American is in the womb. End quote. Since then, the billboard has been taken down, of course. People's tempers hasn't, though, over this whole controversy. But the question is, was it offensive? Joining me now is Jeremy Mintz mentioned uh, Asa Stackle. Do you think it's offensive? I think that when you're first looking at it, you might think it's a little racist. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, just because it's talking about like African-American child mm -hmm. in general being on the poster. But uh, as you were saying earlier, Asa, when you get more into it, then it's really understandable. Asa, what are the statistics? Uh, we were talking before the broadcast, and you told me you came up with some statistics that you were surprised about. Yeah, and I actually went into this into the New York City vital stats on the .gov website, and 59.8% of black pregnancies end in abortion in New York City. Wow. So what is the verdict? Was it offensive? Was it should have been? It was taken down. Okay, was it offensive, yes or no? I would say yes. Okay. I would, I would say it was, but the only thing I could argue about it is that it was offensive looking at it, but once you get into it, it's not offensive All right. anymore. And it did its job, All so right. it works. I guess it did. Thanks, guys, a lot. What do you think? You get the last word on this whole anti-abortion thing. Do you think it's offensive? Uh, email us at the rundown with Anthony Hill at gmail.com. And that's going to do it for me. I'm Anthony Hill, anchoring out of the Al Roker television studio. You can catch me here every week at this same time from the journalists of WTOP News. Good night.